All right, it's time to take a look at the next missile battleship. This is the Barghest, the ship that I nicknamed the Space Pan because of its very, very unique shape. And of course, uh, the the Barghest is definitely one of the best looking battleships in the game. I really like the design of this ship. It is a little bit flat, yes, but the overall aesthetics of this ship are amazing. Now, uh, I actually wanted to fly this ship as my primary PvP battleship, but uh, for now uh, I keep on flying the Makariel as my primary PvP battleship because I find the Makariel to be uh, very lucky with the targets lately. Okay, now let's quickly take a look at the ship info, at the trade description. Now, as with any other Mordu ships, they have the same role bonus, and I think this might be one of the best role bonuses in the game. Now, these ships are usually not that tanky, and they are designed to be used at long range. And the Bargast is uh, exactly one such ship that is really good at long range. You can technically make it uh, effective at, at close range, but it requires a lot of expensive rigs in order to make it work. Okay, well, the stats are very nice so far. Attributes and fitting, two drones, eight high slots, five minus slots, five low slots, three combat and three engineering rigs. Overall, uh, very standard so far. The capacitor is okay. The defense, 109,000 is actually good, but the shield uh, is the primary defense on this ship and the space pen, the Ortus and the Garmur are overall very fragile ships. They don't take a lot of hits. The capacitor 9424, Recharge time 1007 seconds, recharge rate per second 23.4, it can lock 8 targets, a big signature radius 332.2 meters, scan resolution 110 meters, 33.4 signature strength, flight velocity 122 meters per second, and warp speed to astronomic units per second. The space pen is not the fastest, but definitely not the slowest faction battleship, it's really speedy with the mic overdrive. Basically, uh, I can say the same about the other Mordu ships. Now, the build that I currently have has 1890.41 DPS. I'm using C type rapid missile launchers. And first thing that you will notice is the crazy flight velocity 14 km per second. Explosion velocity 1115. Explosion radius 71.45. Flight time 4.21 seconds. Missile range 59.77 km. And honestly, this is looking very nice. Uh, the range on the missiles on this ship are a little bit higher than the, than the range on the Typhoon 2, for example. Now, let me just quickly check if all of the turrets are, all of the missile launchers are C-type, okay. Now I have one battery, capacitor battery, dual missile guidance computers, one large booster and one micro drive. Now, with this build, you can get some ridiculous ridiculously small explosion velocity and explosion radius which will uh, make the damage application really good on the space pen. Now as for the rigs, I went with the exact same rig setup as with the Typhoon 2 in order to have a very accurate comparison between these two ships. Basically a mix of missile damage application, missile velocity and missile range. And so far, I find that this works really well. And I have triple auxiliary thrusters on this ship. Basically, the same rig setup that I have on the Ortus. Now the defense, well, as you can see, not looking very good. Uh, the resistances are really low on the Bargast. And if you want to have a tank build, you can, but you really have to spend ISK on uh, really expensive rigs in order to make it work. Speed 244 meters per second, 2 minutes and 27 seconds is the capacitor runtime, 332 meters is the signature radius. Overall, not bad. Okay, well, let's take a look at the active stats with this current build. I will show you several builds on this ship and I will show you something hilarious in this video as well. So, uh, it's going to be a very interesting day for the Bargas today. Okay. Now 1.4 km per second is the micro warp drive speed, which is, you know, not that bad. Slower than the Typhoon 2, slower than the Makariel, but it's faster than the most battleships. 
2297.24 DPS when the implant is active on explosive should be the same value for thermal as well let me go into precision mode okay this is the precision mode and now the now the explosion radius and velocity should be improved 35.73 explosion radius nice this this is already looking really nice and 40 kilometers per second is the flight velocity on the missiles 59.77 kilometers is the range on the missiles with one computer the range is Explosion radius 17.27 meters and with the second one the explosion 9.64 meters so exactly the same as on the Typhoon 2 well that's actually really nice although the explosion velocity seems to be a little bit lower on this ship than on the Typhoon but the explosion radius is uh, roughly the same and that is a very interesting find 59.77 km is the missile range, so you basically have the same explosion radius, but higher missile range, but a little bit lower explosion velocity on the space pen, if we compare this ship to the Typhoon. Now with the long range cruise missiles, 1950 DPS, they have a really nice alpha damage, 19 km per second is the flight velocity. 130 meter per second is the explosion velocity, 84.21 meter is the explosion velocity, explosion radius, my apologies, and range 176 kilometers. That's really nice. Okay, well, let's take a look at, um, at the active stats with this build. Now, that was in the precision mode. Let me quickly swap to the normal mode, and now it's 2418.14 DPS on the space pan. Really nice. And when I go into a thermal, it should be the same, okay. And when I disable the implant, the DPS is 1989.10. Okay, looks really nice. Now, the explosion radius 168 meters, which is big. Into precision mode and into explosive. Let's turn on one computer and now the Radius is 40.71, and with the second one, it's 22.73, which is honestly really good. Now, I think because of the crazy flight velocity, the missile damage application might actually be a little bit better on this ship than on the Typhoon 2, but we will test that out when I start shooting uh, at smaller targets. With the Typhoon 2, it did take quite a bit to shoot down a small ship, but we will see how it will be uh, using the Bargast with the exact same setup. Now, we all know how the Warhead Charge Implant works by now, so uh, let me just quickly go and show you the general units that I will use on the Space Pan. I will replace the Precision Correction into Extra Missile Range. Now we are going to have some fun with the missiles on the Bargast. So, 90% flight time boost. What do you think? What range am I going to have on the missiles on this thing with this setup? Well, only one way to find out. And I have swapped the implant out. Let me just double check the build. Okay. 32.66%. Okay. And the range is 253 kilometers. Jesus Christ. That's a long range. And that's not even active. Well, let's find out the active range on the missiles, on the cruise missiles. I said that I'll have some fun with this ship. And, well, we are about to have some fun. Now, when I turn off the precision mode, okay, same uh, range. The DPS is the same, okay. Entering precision mode. And let's take a look at the um, 430 kilometer, okay, nice. And with the second one, 585 kilometers missile range. Well, not bad. I'm definitely not going to complain about the missile range on the Bargast. 
it does surpass the missile range on the Typhoon too. It does, but we will see how how it actually will work in in actual use. That's what most that's what's most important. Actual performance of the ship on paper it can say whatever it wants, but the actual performance is what uh, I value the most. Sometimes what's written on paper doesn't really equal to uh, what happens in the actual game, and I've learned that by playing the game for three years. Okay, now I have quad computers, 285 kilometer missile range, let's boot up all of them. Actually, let's do three first. 718 kilometers, okay, and with the last one. 768 kilometer range, nice. And I can actually get that up to 850 kilometers. I, I can actually improve the range even more if I feel like it, <laughs> so um, yeah. I think today I will break my uh, record for the longest, uh, longest kill. My previous record was 450 kilometers with the tornado. And I think the Bargast will hold a new record at 768 kilometers. Okay, now with the torpedo launchers, I have 2,350.96 DPS. They have a decent flight velocity, 8.9 kilometers per second. Shorter range, explosion radius 132 meter. I think this is in the precision mode, so uh, when I undock and check out the stats, the DPS will be slightly higher, but the explosion radius will also be slightly higher and let me just quickly go and swap back the the general unit for for precision because on the torpedoes you don't really need a lot of a lot of range okay precision correction is swapped let me double check yes this oh, okay nice so that will reduce the explosion radius and it will improve the missile damage application on all targets 115 meters okay looks nice well then let's take a look at the active stats on the torpedo launchers without the precision mode dps is almost 3000 to be more accurate 2918.12 dps on thermal should be the same, it is the same, okay, and when the implant is off, the DPS should be 2.3 thousand, almost 2.4 thousand, not bad, really nice. Okay, let's enter the precision mode and let's enter, let's swap the missiles to be explosive missiles. 55.51 meter explosion radius and with the second computer 31 meter, and that is really nice should impact battle cruisers, cruisers, battleships really, really hard. And 34 km is the range on the missiles. Honestly, not bad. I'm quite happy with the results with the space pan so far. Now, let me try a more DPS focus build. I have 3.6 thousand DPS now with dual ballistic controls, really nice DPS value. I also changed the implant to be more suitable for more DPS. The stats on the torpedo launchers are now a little bit different. A lot, a lot more uh, explosion radius, which should reduce the incoming damage on the target, but uh, this ship has a lot of DPS and a lot of missile velocity, so we will see how it will work. 2.9 thousand DPS without the explosive missiles with one ballistic control 4.4 thousand okay and with the second one 5263.38 dps against battleships this should work really really well however you will not do a lot of damage to the smaller targets because of the enormous missile explosion radius and of course slow explosion velocity but on paper, excellent DPS with this current setup on the space pan. Now let me swap the missiles and Docking I'll request pick, accept. I think rapid missiles. Okay, rapid missiles 2.8 thousand DPS. 14 kilometers per second is the velocity. 81.85 meter explosion 
Radius 59.77 km is the range, which is still really nice. Can easily hurt tackle frigates, tackle cruisers that orbit at 40 45 km. Without the implant, the DPS is 2.2338.22, 2, and with the explosive missiles, it's 2.9. With the ballistic control, it's 3478.86 DPS. With the second ballistic control, it's at 4129.02 DPS. Really nice for rapid missiles. In terms of raw DPS, the Space Pen does have higher DPS than the Typhoon 2, but again, uh, the, the, real, the real test and the real comparison will start when when the ship starts shooting at something. 96.83 km rapid missile range with the range setup with quad computers and of course using the general unit for extra range. Okay, now the DPS will be a little bit low, 1854, but the explosion radius will be vastly improved. And let's boot up all four computers now the range is 261 kilometers with the rapid missiles yeah no tackle ship is getting anywhere close to this thing this thing will kill frigates yeah this looks nasty oh man the space pen does what space pen does like a like a fly swatter when you slap that fly that's what it feels like when you shoot at frigates with this thing it feels ridiculous okay let me Swap the build again, now the long range build with the normal cruise missiles, 2.4 thousand with the precision mode. And explosive missiles active, 176 km is the range. Let's take a look at the normal DPS without the implant and without the precision mode. 2461.35, not bad, with explosive missiles. The DPS is almost 3,000, so okay, not bad. With one... 3,664.25, and with the second ballistic control, 4,349.90 DPS. At 176 kilometers. That is impressive. That indeed is impressive. But uh, again, the main thing, how much of that DPS is actually going to be applied to the target? Well, well then, uh, we are about to find that out. So, warping to the next location. And I did say that I will break the record of my longest kill in the game. So, 450 kilometers was the previous record, my own record. So, with this build, I have 768 kilometer range. So, can the space pan slap a frigate or destroyer attack. at 768 kilometers? Well, only one way to We're find it out. Attack. So, I will lock on targets. We'll burn away to 768 We're kilometers around attack. that number. And well. Base range 285 kilometers, so I will test that out as well to see if that distance is any accurate, if it has any accuracy to it. So, first missile launched at 140 kilometers at the destroyer, and it almost killed it. Okay, not bad. So, let me keep on burning. Second missile launched, that should kill the destroyer. Next target will be at 140 kilometers. Actually, 150 kilometers. I will go after the after the interceptor. But first, let me just try something out. So, all computers booted up and missile launched at 465 kilometers. So, will this break my previous record? Well, it probably will. Although it will take a while for the missile to impact the target because uh, even at 20 kilometers per second it will take a while to travel 400 kilometers. So we can wait for the missile to impact the target. Nice, 12,000 alpha hit on the cruiser. Uh, okay, nice. So then, let's, let's keep on burning away. 
still have a long way to 768 kilometers. I like, I love to make ridiculous builds and this might be one of the more ridiculous ones that I've did in a very long time. Okay, 480 kilometers, missile launched. It will take a while for the missiles to hit the target though, that's, that's one thing that I find extremely funny. Technically, you could fire a missile at... Actually, you can't, because the criminal timer would pop up immediately after you launch the missile. Would be funny if the aggression timer would count only if you actually do damage to the target. You could basically launch the missile and warp away. And when you dock, you actually get a kill. And you get the criminal timer inside of the station. Now, that is something that would be very, very hilarious. Okay, so I had and... 11, 12, 14, yeah, I'm moving very fast. So, uh, we are nearing the the range that I want to test out. I will go after the interceptor. 750 kilometers, 51, 53, rapidly increasing. Let me stop the ship. Stop the micro warp drive. Now I'm a little bit outside of the optimal range. Let's Let's approach a little bit, or I can actually swap the primary target. Let me see what I will shoot at here. Okay, let me burn one kilometer towards the targets, and then stop my ship. Okay, stopping ship. Going after the... After the interceptor. Should be within range. Say hard, and 65 kilometers. Missile launched. Well then, uh, missile launched. <laughs> Let's see if they hit the target at 665 kilometers. It will take a while for the missile to travel, so you can, you know, get some popcorn, you know, get a cold drink or something. And, well, let's, let's see what happens. I'm very excited to see if I actually hit at this ridiculous range. The missile is still traveling, it will take a while, you know, at 20 kilometers per second. It's moving quite fast, but still, uh, it has to travel a long range. Any moment now. There we go. The frigate got destroyed at 765 kilometers. And this is officially my new record at the longest kill that I've ever done in this game. Okay, let me move away because I'm too close to the targets. You know, 760 kilometers is too close at the moment. Let's move to 768, 765, around that number, and I will launch the missile at the next target. Okay, so let me stop the boat, booting up all computers, and launch a missile at the... at the Imicus. That's literally at the other end of the galaxy from me, but, you know, the missiles have range, so should hit, we will see. There we go, the missiles, you can... You can see them fly. 770 kilometers. If this hits, that's going to be my new record. Let's break my own record. Why not? I love it. Well, the missiles are still flying. It will, it will take a while, you know. And 770 kilometers. My new record. Nice. Well then, um, yeah, if you want to use the ship like that, you can. You can even orbit manually, and ironically, a ship like this would be almost impossible to catch, even with a cloaky status, especially if they are moving. So, uh, yeah, 768 kilometers, pretty safe in low sack missions. All right. That was uh, enough of sniping. Now let's actually test out some of the other builds. First I will go with the normal large missiles with the DPS build. Of course I swapped the implant to have more explosion velocity and explosion and less explosion radius. Now the beauty of this ship is We're that you can easily manually orbit around your targets and We're under from attack. my personal experience in hunting over three years now and after shooting down on 31,000 ships a ship We're that is attack. moving around inside of a 
storyline mission or encounter is ridiculously hard to tackle. Of course, uh, you can try the double warp trick, but if the target is moving, the double warp trick will not work. That is, if you uh, are trying to tackle a ship like this with a cloak ship. The interceptor tackle could also work in a way, but if they are moving at a long range, they have time to warp out, so in most cases, by the time they lock you on, you will be already warping out, so the best way to stay alive nowadays inside of an encounter or a mission in low sec is to keep on moving. A stationary ship, a ship that stays at zero, a ship that is slow, a battleship is a very easy target for low sec encounters and for storyline missions. So, uh, if you fly one of these ships, it's okay, but make sure that you orbit and that you move. Don't be a sitting duck. A sit sitting duck is a very easy target, and I'm talking from my personal hunting experience for over three years. Most of the battleships that we catch are battleships that don't orbit, battleships that uh, are not even aligned, battleships that uh, are, like I said before, sitting ducks. And a battleship that is not not a stationary battleship is not a sitting duck. But again, uh, there is a lot of other factors that you have to include. But in general, a moving target is a lot more difficult to tackle. And a moving target has a very high chance to survive in low sec. Again, from my personal experience. Now, I think I found out something pretty shocking here with the space pen and with the damage application. I actually think that the space pen does more damage than the Typhoon 2. The Typhoon 2 had problems to, to shoot down the small ships in a decent time frame with a build like this. However, the space pen just goes through them uh, without a problem. And I think the, the main cause for that is the ridiculous missile velocity. On the Typhoon, the missiles go at around 7.4 km per second, around that, at, uh, at a high, let's say, rig integration level, and of course at a high skill level. But on this ship, the missiles go a lot faster and I think the missile velocity does impact the application as well so in that aspect the space pen might actually be doing more damage to the targets so against battleships against large targets it will be quite noticeable however against smaller targets that is going to be another thing that I will have to test out, but so far by the looks of it, the space pen does apply a little bit more damage to the targets. Now, is it worth that much ESC? That's the main question, because the Typhoon 2 already is at that level, but it costs like 20 times less, and the answer to that would be no. Uh, the Typhoon 2 is still a better priced performance ship than the Space Pen. The Space Pen costs about, I don't know, 20 billion right now, and the Typhoon 2 costs 1.2 billion. 1.4 billion, actually. Let me quickly check, since I'm already logged in into the game. I will tell, I will tell you the live price of the ship when I just scroll down to the battleships. If this lag lets me to do that, because my internet is horrible. Battleships, okay, going to the Typhoon 2, where is it? There it is. Well, I was wrong, it's actually quite expensive. 1.4 billion, 1.5 billion, 1.7 billion. The price on the Typhoon 2 definitely increased, the ship used to be cheaper. 
it used to be about 1.2 billion 1.3 billion 1.2 billion but looks like the price has increased wonder why <laughs> wonder why well then uh, back to the space pan you know I actually like how this ship runs in uh, in the in the missions now I know I think most of you know that I have destroyed two of the space pans and the build on these ships wasn't the best it it's definitely not something that I would uh, use on the space pan and that is basically the main reason why uh, those two space pans did get destroyed very quickly the space pen is not built to be at zero. Uh, it's basically used like the like the Ortus, like the Garmon. They usually orbit at long range, at 45 kilometers, 40 kilometers, and most of them use the long range missiles. Now I played around with the with the torpedo Ortus and it's i would say a fun ship but definitely not working that good in close range encounters in close range combat so i will still stick with the long range missiles on the mordu ships now the space pen is unique because you can make the uh, rapid missiles have 45, 59, 60, ships 5 kilometer range. We are under attack. And that is Warp classified drive as long range already. So the spaceman can technically use the attack. close range weapon system at long range. And we are under I think attack. that's uh, also one very unique aspect of the ship. Now, one problem that you will probably encounter is with the micro warp drive because the micro warp drive does give you a very decent speed boost but at the same time it increases the signature radius of your ship and it also increases the damage that your ship will take because the signature radius will be larger and your ship will be easier to hit so an afterburner would be nice if you already use the ship with uh, the rapid missiles orbiting at 40 kilometers because at that range with the drive, the ships that you see here are going to be able to hit the space pan very easily. But with the afterburner you can do some speed tanking without worrying much. And it's this also works uh, in this also works in high sec missions as well. Basically even in high sec, one afterburner, one capacitor battery, and one large booster is all you need to sustain the shield on the ship while having ridiculously high DPS. Now, the Typhoon 2 definitely has better rapid missile performance. And I think the Typhoon 2 is made to be used with rapid missiles. That ship is amazing with rapid missiles. And I can definitely see that the Typhoon does apply more damage than the Space Pan with uh, rapid missiles. So each of each one of these ships has uh, their own preferred weapon system. Now on the Space Pan you can use both, on the Typhoon you can use both. Again, both will work really well and you don't have to worry about the, about the missile performance on these ships. They will run really, really well. In PvP, I would use the Typhoon 2 with rapid missiles and I would use the Space Pan with the normal large missiles. Now why why that? You might wonder, why is that my, uh, my conclusion about these two ships? Well, the Typhoon's rapid missile performance outperforms the rapid missile performance of the Space Pan while the large missile performance on the Space Pan outperforms the large missile performance on the Typhoon. So, uh, that's basically uh, one of the reasons why. The other reason, risking the space pan is, uh, after all, very risky, because the space pan is a very, very high profile target, very noticeable ship on the scanner. 
and at the same time the space pen is not that tanky the typhoon 2 is actually more tanky than the space pen so the typhoon 2 is more suitable for the closer combat while the space pen is more suitable for the long range combat in case of hunting in low sec the space pen can actually work really really well you only need to have one tackle ship that will hold the target, you just warp at 100 and you don't have to worry about the range because even if you mess up the warping you have like what 250 kilometers so you will have enough range to hit the target and you can even go make a black ops bargain like I did with the Macario if Half of the, if half of the game wants you dead, then uh, you slap a clocking device on your battleship. That way you can wait out the timer in peace without worrying about getting jumped by 50 ships. And with the space pen, getting jumped by 50 ships is actually a valid concern. I know when, uh, when we found once, uh, one of the two space pens that we have destroyed, the whole corp, the whole fleet dropped what they were doing and all of them rushed towards the towards the Bargast. It was a very hilarious moment and a moment that I'll definitely remember for a very long time. That's what EVE is all about. You have moments like that and that just sticks with you for years to come. It's a very nice experience, one of the very unique aspects of this game. Not many games do that, and that's why uh, this game, and why EVE in general is very unique and irreplaceable. Now, uh, I really like how the rapid missile works on this ship, however, like I said before, the Typhoon 2 does do a bit more damage. It, it is to be expected, I mean, it's the Typhoon 2 that we're talking about. That ship got such a massive, massive boost in the April Balance Badge. I think it's plus 65.5% extra... Uh, extra missile damage application compared to the other ships. And that is pretty wild. And all that without the need of... Without the need of... Not expert skills, but without the need of advanced skills. You need to have only the basic skills to make the Typhoon 2 really, really well. Of course, the advanced skills will further improve the performance of the ship. Now here you can see that I'm having some shield problems with the space pan because of the micro warp drive and the, and the capacitor problems, problems as well because of the mic warp drive, but I have turned off the mic warp drive and still, I'm still taking damage. So the mic warp drive on or off doesn't really help. After all, the spaceman is a huge ship. This is one of the, one of the largest battleships in the game, I think. It's 2.5 kilometers long. The apocalypse is 1.7 kilometers long, so this thing is huge. Also, one of the unique aspects for the Morgul ships, they have big ships. The Ortrus is like 750 meters, which is the length of a battleship already. And the Garmor is also quite... But actually, no, I think the Garmor is actually quite small. That thing is very small, I think. Have to... Have to double-check the numbers. But... In any case, uh, let's let's ignore the the ship classification now. I know that sometimes the ship size doesn't really correlate to the ship class, but it's funny that this thing is as long as a carrier. The smallest carrier Cooling. is the limited carrier at three kilometers, I think, two point eight kilometers or three kilometers. I have to actually let me check that out on the market here because I'm already logged in. Let's go to, to carriers. The lag is not 
the internet is not on my side today. Okay, let's go to the carrier section. There is a carrier. Let's take a look at the skills. Not the skills, but the 2188 meter is the Mimeter carrier. Let's take a look at the space span. Should be around the same size then. One thousand seven hundred fifty-seven meters. Okay, so it's not as big as I thought that it would be. My apologies. I was I was wrong about the shape size. Although barely any difference when you when you compare them side by side. But overall, am I am I satisfied with the with the Pargus, with the miscellaneous plant? Yes, yes I am. This little boat does work really well. Although it is uh, a little bit uh, on the detected. expensive side. But I, active. Think, I think if you want to fly the ship, you can. It's after all a faction battleship and it definitely does perform really, really well. All right. Well, that was a very Docking lovely little run with the with the space pan. Again, a very fun ship, a very expensive ship. I have to mention that, of course. So, uh, with that being said, hope that you enjoyed. Hope that this uh, little video can help you with the build on this ship. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.